Sodden. So hopefully the quality is better. I'm using my DSLR with a mic that I finally got in the mail. So hopefully you can hear me and see me crisply. So as far as printing goes for the Iron Man suit, all we have left is the rest of the abs. Um, the shins are done. We've got the boots and the neck piece and the fingers. Can't forget those. The ab pieces are gonna be printed out of this flexible filament so I can actually move. And the other half of this is printing now. So we're getting there. So I wanted to talk about two of the goals that I have for this suit, one of them being the double hinge knee and the other being the collapsible ab plate. So for the arms, I printed these. This is what I used to join them with. The Chicago screws that I use fit right through there in the middle. Um, and they worked out pretty well for the arms. But for the knees, like I said before, I wanna make it so that the kneecap actually stays in the middle of the knee when it bends. On the previous suit that I made, and I can actually show you on this one, so this is the old, old suit. You can see I have it pivoting at one point, but when you bend your knee, there's this huge gap in between the thigh and the shin. And I want the kneecap to actually stay in the middle when it bends no matter what. So the goal is to make something that incorporates both of these, but has them hinged here so that whatever is attached here can have the knee plate in the middle. Hopefully these would turn at the same rate and then the knee plate would stay in the center. So the goal here is to come up with something that turns these at the same rate and also holds the knee plate stationary. Because when one moves, if they're not turning at the same rate and say just the top one is moving, then the knee plate is gonna go up and just move with the thigh. Same thing goes for the bottom one. If just this one is pivoting and not this one, then the kneecap is just gonna move along with the shin. So in order to get both of these to turn at the same rate and keep it in the middle, we're gonna put some gear teeth on the end of them so they interact with one another and they both bend. So I don't know why my screen flickers when I click, but just bear with me. This is what's going to be attached to the kneecap, and this, these two pieces are what's going to be attached to the thigh and the shin. So whenever the thigh bends this way, this is also bending that way, keeping the knee piece in the middle. Is it overkill? Maybe. But, you know, I really enjoyed making it and I thought it was a good idea. So we're gonna print this out and see how it works. Lucky for you, you don't have to wait 24 hours before it's done, but I do. So we're gonna go ahead and throw it on the printer. While that's printing though, I wanna talk about the collapsible app plates. I've been trying to think of ways to do this because normally the more that you over design something, the more likely it is to not work, which is why I'm kind of concerned with the double hinge knee thing, but we'll see about that. So I'm thinking about taking some long compression springs and taking them and attaching them at the top and the bottom of each plate. And then also at the top and the bottom of the plate below it. So ideally we would have one spring. I doubt they make them that long, but maybe a couple that are attached both here, 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 and here so that one, they keep the angle that they're at in relation to one another, and two, they're able to compress on top of each other. So I think I'm also gonna take buckles and attach it to the top of the springs for this top piece so that I can attach it to the chest and it'll actually stay up here and it won't get pulled down below it. Similarly, the bottom of the springs will be attached to the bottom of the ab piece, so they're not going anywhere either. And the only movement we'll be able to have is the compression of the actual ab plates themselves. All right, so it's the next day everything's done printing. I put it together. Chicago screws are a little loose. I'm gonna have to get tighter ones. So I use some pieces of foam, just scraps as spacers for now. Um, but the basic idea works just as I hoped it would. Everything moves together. And then we'll take the knee right here and actually attach it to the front plate so that everything stays in the middle. So we're gonna go ahead and attach the knee here and then attach the thigh to this and the shin to this. Okay, so I got everything connected. I'm still gonna have to get tighter screws. Like I have to put pressure on it right now for it to work right, because the screws are too loose. But it stays in the middle like it's supposed to. Okay, so despite the fact that I actually had to take the gear apart because it was too tight on my knee. So now this is just a single pivoting point. Um, I can actually bend my knee a lot. A lot more than I could in the last one. I can go full 90 degrees, which I could not do in the last suit. Um, so I probably will go back and redesign this to be a little wider so it's not so tight on my knee because I physically could not get it on over my knee with this part on the inside attached to the inner gear. You can see that's the outer gear right there. So that was supposed to be interlocking with the one on the inside, but it was just too tight. So I'll probably have to go back and make that 
a little looser, but I at least know where to pivot everything because honestly, a lot of this is trial and error as to where the hinge should be. And I think I hit it right on the head. So at least I'll know where to put it. I just have to create a bigger one and install it. So I'm gonna try to print the double hinge a little wider in hopes of making it work because it seemed to work fine before I tried it on and realized it was too tight. Also, fun fact, gonna be moving into my college apartment this weekend, but it's a new apartment and I'm on the third floor never been above anyone else before, which means I don't know how loud my 3D printers are gonna be. So next video might be something like me trying to silence them or the best way to do so. And if anyone has any recommendations for that, please let me know. I know stepper motor dampers are a thing and I'm definitely gonna try that in addition to setting them on a foam mat or something, but that will probably be the next thing I tackle because the last thing I want is complaints from people downstairs when I'm printing 24 seven. And for the homies that sat here and watched this whole video, thank you. Put lechuga in the comments or something and we're, we're just gonna confuse everybody else.